In this video, I'm going to show you how to export your footage to make it look nice and crispy in Premiere Pro. So this is going to be a super straightforward step-by-step -step tutorial where I will explain every single setting and what you should tick, what you shouldn't tick. So let's jump right into it. As you can see, I have a few clips on my timeline right here. And if you are curious, uh, I am in the coloring workspace right now, which you can access by coming here to workspaces and then going to color. Yeah, as you can see on my timeline, I have these three clips and I have an audio track added to it as well. Let's say I wanted to export this video to YouTube. What would I do? Well, here's how I would get started. First, you want to make sure that all your tracks that you want to export are visible and not muted. So you can see if a track is muted, for example, because uh, it has, you know, this uh, M, M uh, like button clicked, but you want to make sure it's not clicked and you want to make sure all the layers that you want to have on your video are uh, visible and uh, that, you know, you can toggle here. Next thing you want to do is you want to set the in and out points for your video. So the range uh, of the video that is between the two in and out points are uh, the ones that are going to be exported in your final file. So to set the end point, you want to press I on your keyboard and then you want to go to the point where your video ends, right? And then you want to press O on your keyboard to set the out point. And now you can see we have this selection here on the timeline. So everything that is after this selection, like this point, is not going to be included in our render file and everything that is within it is going to be included in the render. If you want to, you know, redo your selection, you can just right click here and then come here uh, and click clear in and out. And as you can see, it got rid of the selection we created. The next thing you want to do is you want to export it. There are two ways to export right now in Premiere. Uh, one is you can go up here uh, to file uh, and then click here on export media and then it's going to take you to the export menu or you can also press uh, command and E or control E on your keyboard to bring up the exporting menu uh, like that as you can see or you can also switch in uh, here on the top between you know import ex edit and export and if you just go from edit to export, you are going to get to your exporting menu as well. The next thing uh, you want to do is, as you can see here is uh, the video preview uh, that we created. You wanna make sure everything that you want to have included in your uh, export is actually there. And if you set the in and out point, uh, you can select that here and you wanna make sure it's on source in and out, right? And then uh, in terms of scaling, uh, you want to leave this at scale to fit because otherwise, you know, with these other options, it would like stretch out the video to fit your sequence settings and so on. It's gonna make it look weird. So just keep it at scale to fit. Again, you can also play it back to make sure that, you know, everything is, is uh, good and uh, it has everything you want to have in your final export. Now. The next thing is here, as you can see, it's going to give you the source files, right? Like the settings of the of the timeline, basically. So you can see this is a 1920 by 1080 video, uh, square pixels aspect ratio, 25 frames per second, uh, 48,000 hertz, stereo audio, and it's one minute and four seconds. Now here in the output settings, you want to make sure that the the main uh, key things match. So want to make sure that the resolution matches the frames per second matches. And uh, those are the two most important in my opinion. If we can come here to settings, you can actually name your video, whatever you want. So I'm going to name this whatever editing, right? And then you can also select the location right under it. Um, so you can select where you want your final file to be exported to. In this case, I'm just going to leave it at my desktop uh, and then click save, right? Now for the preset, uh, as you can see, Premiere Pro actually has a bunch of different presets already for you. You can actually even click here on more presets and you can see they have a ton of different presets. Um, now, if uh, you search up YouTube, they all also have a YouTube full HD preset. And uh, if you want to use that a lot, you can actually favorite it by clicking on this little star here. So I'm going to start with the uh, YouTube, you know, preset, and then I'm going to customize it a little bit for my exact liking to get the highest quality possible. So I'm going to select that preset, click OK. And now you can see it selected the YouTube 1080p full HD preset. Now, as for the format, which is going to be your file format, like what format the video is in, you want to keep that, in my opinion, at H.264. This is the most widely used 
you know, preset kind of for um, internet videos. You could also use MOV if you're a, like a Mac user, but uh, you know, then, or a QuickTime, but your file sizes are going to be significantly bigger uh, from my experience if you use that. So yeah, for in general, I just like keeping it H.264 for YouTube uh, stuff. Now, if we click on this little, uh, you know, Thing. we can see more settings uh more video settings more specifically um here i like to have it match the source uh the export settings uh yeah i'm going to keep the frame rate the same as the source the full hd resolution can we can keep leave that at that as well as for uh aspect we want to set that to square pixels one and then if we click here uh to more i like to uh tick render at maximum depth. This is just going to make sure that we get a little bit of those extra details in the shadows. And yeah, just to make sure that the video has the maximum render quality. And also you want to press that as well, use maximum render quality. Again, these are just uh, some extra settings to make sure that your video is as uh, high quality and Premiere Pro does as good of a job as possible with the little details and all that stuff. Now, as for time interpolation, uh, you want to leave that at frame sampling. For encoding settings, uh, you know, you basically have hardware encoding or software encoding. Uh, I just leave that at hardware encoding. For profile, I leave it at high or uh, level. I also leave that at what it gives me as the base and I don't really mess with the color settings uh, at all pretty much. The next thing that we have here uh, that we need to set is the bitrate settings. So you have three options when it comes to your bitrate encoding and bitrate is really just like the, again the how much detail is uh, in your image right. So there are basically three types. Uh, there is CBR which is constant bitrate. There is VBR, which is a variable bitrate. And uh, within VBR, we have two different options. We have VBR one pass and we have VBR two pass. Basically what VBR or variable bitrate means is it's going to change how much data it puts into the image, uh, depending on how much like movement and action is in your video. So you know, for example, with this clip, as you can see, there's not that much movement. Most of the image is the same stuff. Like most of this clip is uh, just the same thing in one sitting. So for example, here it wouldn't use as big of a, or as high of, of a bit rate because it would just make the file unnecessarily big. There aren't that much, you know, movement happening. But for example, here, like when this guy is moving and everything, there's a little bit more movement here. You can see there is a lot of movement, right? With all these fireworks going off. So here you would want to have a really high bit rate. So the details uh, look as good as possible, right? For YouTube, I um, basically pretty much always just use VBR one pass because I feel like this is the best like common ground between having two big file sizes and also between not having your footage look good. So VBR one pass for me usually looks pretty nice. I'm happy with the results, but the file sizes aren't outrageously big. If you are going to use two pass, it just means that it's going to analyze the footage like two times if, I, if I'm correct and uh, you know, yeah, it's going to make your file size also bigger. So I leave it at VBR one pass. And in terms of the target bitrate, I like to shoot a little bit above what YouTube recommends. Uh, there is actually this whole list that YouTube gives you in terms of like, what is the, the target bitrate that they uh, recommend for um, each kind of like resolution. So basically, you know, the higher the resolution of the video that you want to upload to YouTube, the higher bitrate uh, they recommend as well. So, you know, if you're uploading a 4K video, you obviously want to have a higher bitrate than if you are uploading a 720p or a 1080p video. I like to keep my target bitrate basically between like 20, 25. It is a little bit above what YouTube recommends and it's going to dumb it down a little bit. It's going to compress the file size a little bit, but I still like to be on the safe side uh, and make sure that everything gets enough um, detail and bitrate on the image. And you can see if I, as I change the target bitrate, it actually gives me like an estimated file size. So if I would, you know, pull this all the way up, it would give me like a much bigger uh, file size compared to if I have it, you know, at like, let's say 20. As for advanced settings, uh, keyframe distance, you want to uh, not mess with that. Uh, and obviously, well, this video is not a VR video, so I'm not going to check uh, VR video. Now for the audio settings, uh, I pretty much don't mess with those at all. Uh, I guess the only thing is uh, you want to make sure, you know, your bit rate is high enough. So I think the 320 is enough for YouTube. With most stuff, YouTube actually compresses it anyways. So 
you know, even your video, even your audio is not going to be just as good as the actual raw file because YouTube has to store all those billions of videos that are uploaded to the platform. So they can't keep the original file sizes on their servers, right? In the multiplexer, I don't uh, mess with that at all. I don't really uh, use captioning either on my videos. Now for the effects, there is basically this uh, solution that if your videos, uh, you know, let's say you color gate a video in Premiere Pro, right? And then you export it. And then you might notice that your color grade looks a lot like less vibrant or looks a bit different uh, in the export than what happens uh, inside of Premiere. So if you have that issue, I am actually going to link a quick video below this one. Like you can actually fix that issue really quickly by applying a gamma compensation LUT. Uh, I'm also going to link that gamma compensation LUT below this video. So basically, if you just download that LUT, you click here on Lumetri a lot, and then you come here to select, and then you will select that uh, gamma compensation LUT file. If you apply that here to your footage, uh, when you export the video, it's not going to look more washed out uh, than when you actually edit that inside of Premiere. Figuring that out took me years, literally. I, for the longest time, I was very frustrated with how my footage looked different inside of Premiere than outside of it. So hope that saved you guys a little bit of time uh, to know how that works. Just click on the link, download that file, and whenever you are exporting, um, just uh, click here on the metric look, uh, you know, and choose that lot. But for now, I'm not going to apply it on this one because I haven't done any color grading. For these other ones, I. I genuinely don't uh, click any of those. Now here as well in metadata, uh, I don't really um, change anything there. And um, in general, I, uh, you know, if you use proxies, uh, then you can export it faster if you select that. Uh, but to be honest, I don't really click these most of the time either. So uh, once all of that is done, you can click here on export. And then as you can see, uh, it's going to encode your sequence. And then once it's completely done, your finished file should be on your desktop. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it interesting. If you want to learn more about content creation and mastering Adobe Premiere Pro, click the link in the description or the comment section below and uh, register for the webinar about how to master content creation fast in Adobe Premiere Pro. So hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.